I watched the first episode of this. I found it really engaging. Uh, do you remember where you were when this all happened? Because, of course, when you watch the stories like these, you go, oh, 1993. I remember yeah. this being on the news all the time. I was 12 years old. Mm -hmm. I was uh, also 12. <laughs> I, I think I remember just that last terrible shot of the compound in flames, to be honest. And I don't even know if I really remember that part at that age, but obviously growing up or learning some history, being from Canada or whatnot. So there, the one other one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's my mom, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's really all I really remember. It's interesting, because I think that's true of a lot of us. We remember the tail end of it. Of course, yeah. this story takes you back. And one of the things, which, of course, makes sense when he was followed by so many people, is there's a charisma yeah. and likability to him. So you're not playing a madman as much as you're playing somebody who had this ability to connect with people. Was I that think, a strange way to approach it? I think that's the right way to approach it. Um, I think Obviously, during the siege, it was very sensationalized and one-sided with the press and whatnot. The Davidians were cut off from the press. So I think what we're doing here is basically humanizing not only Dave, but the Davidians and their families, the followers. And what he was so good at was giving them purpose. And I think everyone searches for that at some time in their life, multiple times or whatnot. But, and he was a messenger, self-proclaimed messenger of God. So if he had no followers, he's got no purpose as well. So he needed them as much as they needed him. So It was uh, based on a couple of uh, books, uh, yeah. a couple of FBI guys, and then a guy who was in the Davidians. Uh, yeah, David Thibodeau. So we optioned Gary Nesner's book, who was the lead FBI negotiator. That's who Michael Shannon plays, Mike right? Mike Shannon, yeah, up and coming. Green actor. <laughs> yeah, it Green. might work out. Might work out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's amazing. Yeah, he's a great actor. Um, yeah, and then David Thibodeau, one of the nine survivors of the final siege. And um, he was on set every day, you know, and I think that's like the ultimate flattery and validation, you know, after day one was a, a sermon about joy and being a Davidian, and that was a big one. So uh, he was there on day one, obviously, and that was uh, to have him kind of tip the hat was it just let me fly from there on. Uh, obviously, uh, you had to do a lot of Bible study for this role. You yeah. also had to lose a lot of weight for this role. You 30. also had to learn how to play guitar and sing a little bit because he was a musician. Was that yeah. the most intimidating part? Uh, I think it's all-encompassing for sure. But, I mean, I was learning getting voice lessons in L.A., and it was the second time, and I was, like, nowhere even near of hitting any note. Your second so voice lesson? Yeah, yeah, second voice lesson. Get in there, walk in, and it was... You know, there's a gal that was doing Broadway or whatnot uh, in right with the piano and the teacher, and I literally just sat back, and she was incredible. And uh, they went like five minutes over, and they stop, and I'm kind of just sitting there just, you know, listening, loving it. And uh, she's like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I'm a big fan. I just ran over, and I'm like, well, I'm talking to the coach at this point. I'm like, well, you start at a 10. <laughs> Yeah. And then now we're going to start, like, <laughs> below right. zero, and, like, I'm going to Well, gonna that's the depressing thing when you go and you realize people who are great are also getting voice lessons. You were like, yeah. oh, I thought this was all for people who were terrible. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, There's, like, a picture of Celine Dion right next <laughs> yeah. to me, and I'm like... Yeah, I got a feeling you and Celine weren't starting from the same. It's not a yeah. level playing field. No. Uh, so I want to ask, uh, Friday Night Lights, fantastic show. Thank I'm you. assuming you get... Approached all the time. How do people approach you in that show? Like, is there just an emotional connection constantly? Uh, one, they want to get drunk with Tim Riggins. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, which, yeah, Tim would do that a lot. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I live in Austin, Texas, which is an amazing city. And so it's obviously being in Texas, you get a bit more of it. Um, but people, you know, are just incredibly flattering and they want to have a drink with you 90% yeah. of the time or talk about coach. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who still lives in Austin as well. That I feel like you're making it hard for people by living in the city it was filmed I because know. you can't say to them, hey, that's not me. And they'd be like, well, then you should have moved. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still living in the past, I think. So this is a, I, I'm going to make a weird leap here, but uh, David Koresh was mm -hmm. a failed musician to some degree, or a musician, yes. I, you know. But um, And there is something about music and sermonizing and connecting with an audience in the same For way sure. you do as a religious leader. Uh, I think we share a great love of Bruce Springsteen. Yes, and we do. He, 
He's on Broadway right now. I saw it. I actually, it was very close to a religious experience for me. Yes. You went a couple nights ago? I did. How was it? Uh, man, he raised me, that guy. Yeah. Uh, he really did. I just, I was just blown away. I cried. I laughed. It, it's just, uh, as much as he's telling his story, you just, he takes you back. And it's just like, you remember these beats of your, like, first kiss to... You know, traveling in the car, obviously, or the first time you went camping, or all these kind of beats throughout your life. So it was just incredible. The other thing about it is not uh, the cheapest tickets you're ever going to buy. No. And then I don't even like during the show. I had this realization of I would have paid ten times. Yeah. This is worth ten. This is the biggest I, deal I've ever got. I came out of there and I went with my best friend, and I'm like, I would have easily paid way more for that. Yeah. It was a, I went up, uh, I threw money on stage at the end. I was like, oh, I, really? I threw I, panties. <laughs> my panties were up there. No. Uh, thanks so much for being here. Thanks Congrats for on the show. Me. Really Thank a pleasure. You.